to the end time truth television the channel for the lovers of truth for the truth of the end time so if you are a lover of truth give us a subscription and god bless you shalom hello everybody good morning good afternoon good evening god bless every one of you thank you so so much today i think it is a bit wise we digress a bit and um you know listen to something that can be of help personally to us i you know people have always asked me you know some persons who are angry with us and they say now nah, if everybody is fake show us the original by their fruits you shall know them so me cannot tell you this one is original and i've not even called anybody an outcast of the kingdom of god all that we do is just to you know question that that is bad and amplify that which is good we question that that is not so good and we amplify that which is good so i think this these persons are worth listening to so i bring you the message of apostle um arome osai it will go a long way to encourage your faith and it teach you certain things that you do not know you know sometimes we pray and we are in a hurry to receive answers you see and um, sometimes we are even discouraged because we don't know the nature of the god who had called us out of the darkness of this world into his marvelous light you see when we know god enough it becomes very easy every one of us is learning god and we cannot know him enough actually so forgive me for saying that word using that word we can't know him enough but he can be gracious uh, you know unto us and reveal a, a glimpse of himself to us and that glimpse of him that um you know splash or flash of knowledge of him that we have can go a long way to shape our lives so i'd like you to listen to this and probably you are having this experience of being discouraged because you have prayed for a long time and and in your own heart you have prayed enough and it's like god is adamant god is not listening god cannot be wrong god cannot be unfaithful so if anything is wrong it definitely is not from god we are the cause of the things that we call god's unfaithfulness our god can never be unfaithful so happy viewership uh okay happy viewing rather i'll be seeing you in the next video please watch and put down your comment in the comment section kindly share the video and subscribe to this video if you wish i mean if you have not subscribed before and uh, you may consider joining the channel membership god bless you i'll be seeing you soon in the next video till then from me to, to talk to you shalom you see it's difficult relating with a king spirit the king spirit only does what he wants to do. Are you with me? Only. So you, you might decide that you are praying for three days, dry fasting, because you want to hear his voice. And you finish your three days, he didn't speak to you because it's you that gave three days, it's not him. I'm not saying three days are dry fasting, it's not an effort. <laughs> but I'm saying it's your effort. It's a good effort anyway. But it's your effort. He will decide when he, he, he honors your attempt to seek his wisdom. He will decide when he will show up. So if you understand that, your, your disposition will be a disposition of somebody that is waiting upon the Lord. You are waiting upon the Lord because it is only when he wants to speak that he will speak. So the, that is part of the etiquette that you must cultivate, that you are relating with a spirit that is king, a spirit that is lord, and no one pushes a king around. So when you have finished your three days dry fasting and nothing happens, start another one. Finish that one, nothing happens. The king is not ready to talk here, but we will we'll dwell with him. We will dwell with him. He, in your dealing with you, he will establish adequately that he's king. Yes. He will establish that adequately. So someone that comes with anxiety, say, hey, 
then you just discover that your cry your tears cannot move him then you you humble yourself and you now learn how to wait it is only when he wants to disclose himself eh, that he will do so so but make sure you you are waiting your place is waiting until such a time that he decides that oh i'm willing to disclose myself you cannot know him because you have a will to know him you will only know him because he decides to reveal himself and that's a humbling situation and I, I want to help you those of you that just started seeking the face of god and you are seeking for some issues and you have found out that there is no feedback how, how many of you are like that i came to tell you that you are interfacing with the king and he will he will speak but he will speak when he wants to speak and that's the reason why a, 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 an adventure into seeking the counsel of god begins with a very needful culture called waiting upon God. you can speak in tongues you can listen to tapes but all you are doing is you are just angulating yourself to receive from him so the first thing that you need to know is the culture of waiting has thou not heard has thou not known that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth he is never weary and there's no searching of his understanding he given power to the faith and to them that have no mind he increases strength or even the youth shall friend have been willing. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait. So there's a blessing for the waiters. They have the opportunity of renewing their strength. I saw someone the other day was fagged out. And I was wondering, if I ask him what he has done for, for, the, for that day, he won't have done anything significant. He's only wearied by, by circumstances and situations. And that will be your portion if you don't experience the renewal of strength. We're always, people like us, we're always in the face of the devil. Cut him in, uh, clear him, clear him out of the way so that what God wants to do can find expression. So he is not particularly interested in our peace. But you know what? Our peace is not up to him to decide. Because they that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says, they shall. They shall mount up with wings like the eagle. They shall walk and not be weary. It means that we do the, you know, mount up with wings like the eagles. That we do the supernaturally, naturally. Run and not be weary. That we do the naturally, supernaturally. Because it's not possible for you to run and not be weary. So running is natural. But running and not being, being weary is doing the natural, supernatural. That's the proof that you have found the Holy Ghost. You can do the supernatural naturally. And you can do the natural supernatural. Now listen. Whereas talking, talking is natural. I can talk to Pastor Tony. And we'll talk from morning to night. But talking to God is not natural. When you find a man that can talk to God from morning to night, he's not doing it with natural abilities. It is when you are telling. It might, it might look natural. He's just sitting there just talking to God. Say, God. You know, and he's talking to God from morning to evening. And then you see him, he's still kneeling there and he's talking to God. You say, wow. Me too, tomorrow I will talk to God. And then you start, after 10 minutes, slumber. You wake up even very late. You will know that he's doing something supernatural, but he's doing it naturally because he has found the Holy Ghost. So there's a blessing for the people that decide to wait. Part of it is renewing their strength. Saw some people that were burning for God those days on campus ah, and entered into the banking sector and all of that. And they were wondering why I could still pray the way we prayed on campus. He had wandered out of that waiting place. So he's now seen the supernatural as a wonder. Meanwhile, it should be something he's interfacing with and he's, he's at home with the supernatural. The reason why that is possible is because there is an arrangement of renewal of strength that is in the Holy Spirit. So the king will not come just because you are crying. Waiting is part of the culture of the adventurer. Waiting is part of the culture of the pilgrim. Because the one before whom you have come is a king. I've seen people that took off like tornadoes. Seven years later, they came back. 
with stories of woes and all those seven years were wasted meanwhile they were moving fast because they wanted to, to, to catch up with destiny but they went without the Holy Ghost so the devil helped them waste seven years it was after seven years they realized ah, you know Satan he's been around a long time he's only a man that is helped by the Holy Ghost that can outsmart him please help me tell your neighbor your brain your beauty your strength we can't for nothing but the Bible says the young man will utterly for preach for me preach for me your strength your beauty it will count for nothing for even the youth shall faint the Bible says and the young men they shall utterly so the one that doesn't embrace the culture of waiting he is going to waste his moments and and may, may you be recovered uh, may you be recovered before everything is spent Amen. to understand that the way of is waiting at the foot of the king until he stretches forth his scepter in your direction and says, Abike, go for me. And that word you will receive in five seconds will be the reason why a mighty nation sealed with iron will open to you. Are you there? So there is a waiting culture that we must have. And that culture is born out of humidity. Humidity that is a function of revelation. Knowing that our God is a king spirit and not a servant spirit many people will think that you know the way we pray these days will send god say go <laughs> go and destroy if you have not labored in this matter that i'm talking about you will not know that god is a king and i wonder the people that write those prayer books prayers that have the shape of of quran that's not the bible because the god of the bible is the king and you will need to learn how to wait for him i don't have time to show you how many times the psalmist say i will wait i will wait it was not convenient his soul was agitated but he had to bring his soul into obedience so be quiet and wait wait there is this haste that is locked on the soul of man that haste is a result of the fall that haste is what will make you run away from the presence of God. And that haste is what will, will indoctrinate you to think that God is slow. God is not forthcoming. God wastes time. The reason, one man, we, uh -uh, an elder of a church was caught in a herbalist shrine. He said, ah, you too, you came. He said, God, do the day. God, the day. God, the day. God, the day. <laughs> Went with face cap so that it will be the angle. <laughs> the angle of recognition is bleak. But with his face cap, he was still, he was still because the, there were uh, many members of the church that used to visit. But they were not expecting to meet it. They say, Ah, yes, yes. They say, God, they take, God to the tea. <laughs> if you have any other alternative apart from God, you will go. The king will ensure that he wearies you. Such that if there's any alternative on your heart apart from him, you would have left him. He will never want you to choose him as a second option. If you have a heart to, to make him second option, he will weary you with time until it becomes unreasonable for you to be waiting. You will choose the other option. But it's only people that are foolish that don't have any other option. When everybody had escaped, everybody had, just like that woman, he said, where are the people that accuse you? Oh, they are gone. Me, myself. I do not accuse. There are, there are people that we leave. I remember there was one guy those days in Kano. He said, God, if you need, if I must die so that you can move, to kill me, I die. The day God wanted him. Hmm? When I brought the list of people that we preach in the crusade and his name was not there, it was the first problem we had. He fought us till that crusade finished. Meanwhile, anytime he preached, he said, Kill me, God! So that the kingdom can move. That was the day we realized he didn't mean that he was. <laughs> the Lord knows your heart. Five years later, when I entered into Kano, I was looking for him because they said he, had, he has given his life to star. Star. 
That's the man that used to say, let God kill him. See, God is not so moved by our public talk. Because we know how to say what people want to hear. But in the, in the practicalities of interfacing with God, it has to do with a heart of sincerity. A heart that honors God genuinely. A heart that doesn't have any alternative. A heart that is willing to wait when it seems like you have wasted time and people want to mock you then the monarch will rise from his throne and use his scepter to touch you he will open up your spiritual senses to be able to hear him speak to you face to face the objective of this teaching is that each and every one of us will be able to come to that point when he will speak to you face to face he will make you wait he will wait for long and then if it is clear that you have no other alternative but him then he will show you that he's the creator and that he doesn't dwell in eternity and he doesn't take eternity for god to do what is eternal when i went for youth service i was determined that i will not come back until i find god i was posted to Kano, and i was not willing to come back home until i find god what was our salary those days the government paid us one money. I've forgotten the amount. I think it's 7,500 Naira. So at least you have been paid. You don't need to write exams. Ah, that's a good word. So I decided to give myself to prayer. I said, if you can be known, I'm here to, to look for you. If you can be found, then I will seek you. And then you will think that when you have made up your mind to seek the Lord, that he will just appear. No, your heart is not aligned. You see, a camera, before the focus on the camera can be clear, there are some adjustments that need to be made in order for adequate, accurate alignment to come into place. And so God begins to work on your heart. Oh my, oh my. Some people came to God because they were told in, in, in wherever they went for, for um, training that God is about results. He's going to clear your doubt. He will clear your doubt. But you will know that it's not about results. You will know that it's about him. Life is about him. Not about what you drive. Not about what you can do. Not about how beautiful you are. Not about how much money you have seen. It is about him. And everything that must be done in his name must be done to give him glory. I'm only a conduit pipe through which he can be glorified, through which the desires of his heart can be satisfied. And when I bring myself to that place where I, 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 I solve the problem of satisfying the desires of his heart, I'm living for him. I always have access to, to him because I'm living for him. I'm not living to do my thing. And then when you begin to live for him, he will show you that that's the greatest thing that you can do with your life. You live for him. You live for him. If he wants to begin the regime of blessings that are in the Holy Ghost on your life, the first thing he will do is that he will activate your receptacle. He will activate your receptacle. He will make your spiritual senses active so that when he moves over your heart, your spiritual senses will be able to discern what is locked in his movement. You see, when Jesus speaks, that utterance is trapped in the Holy Ghost like a wave. And then he moves over your heart with that frequency. If your heart is trained, if he's the one that has activated your senses, you'll be able to discern what is on the heart of Jesus. That is the proof of intimacy. You must have passed the test of submission. You must have passed the test of acknowledging that he's king. You must have passed the test of waiting. And the whole agenda of life is to wait to receive instruction from you. You must have passed the test of prayer. You must have made prayer a, a consistent part of your daily life. Are you with me? You must have passed the test of alignment. And alignment in this case is all of the meaning of the word holiness. I'm doing what he wants me to do. I'm here because he says I should be here. I am doing this matter because it, oh i told you some time ago in 2009 jesus appeared to me and spoke about youth ministry from 2009 to 2019 i went all over the landscape the meaning of 10 years in my life 
was a nine seconds encounter I had with Jesus where he spoke about youth ministry. That was the meaning of 10 days of my life. You, it, it, it must be known that you are living for him. When you have passed these basic requirements, then he brings you to the next level where he empowers your inner senses to be able to perceive him. When your inner senses are empowered to perceive him, he, he, he is no longer far away. You can never be depressed anymore. Doesn't matter what happens. Who dies, who lives, who becomes president, what is happening. No. You, he, he can never be far away again. He becomes that friend that sticks get closer than a brother. The kind of relationship he wants is an intimate one. God is a very jealous personality. He will not share you with anybody. Very intimate one. Very personal. Very private. Very affectionate. And the things that he is doing within the, the stage of your heart, the next person sitting by your side will have no clue. 